10. In response, the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport activated its emergency response plan immediately following the event. With the deployment of various zonal technical teams and cleanup crews. So today, another day of you know visiting some of the places hardest hit. So we visited the Dimple at Louise Primary School, uh, also the Corinth Secondary School. Spent time in Rosalie Town, a place affectionately known as the Coco Pear, and visited some of the other areas hit. Nine. Preliminary assessments indicate that we have moved from a level 1 disaster to a level 2 disaster. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, distributed drinking water daily to affected households, along with emergency food boxes, bedding and sanitizing agents. The Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, activated $200,000 worth of food and sanitizing vouchers to be distributed to affected households, to the National Emergency Organization, NEMO, and constituency offices which have had affected residents. The Prime Minister has also been in dialogue with international donor agencies as St. Lucia will require both technical and financial assistance to respond to this crisis. Eight. I think the help needs to be in time. Yeah, so uh, that's why we are doing this afternoon. We try to provide a small fund and I hope that this small fund will bring relief to the school. We want to invite other persons who are concerned to, to really show their concern by, by providing some form of assistance, monetary or in kind. Seven. St. Lucia's Forensic Science Laboratory has officially been granted accreditation from the American Association for Laboratory Accreditation. This makes our laboratory the only forensic laboratory within the OECS and one of two within CARICOM to achieve this milestone. Six. The Choiseul fishing port was built by the Japanese government in 2001. The St. Lucia government has spent the last two decades routinely conducting dredging operations to alleviate the sedimentation density at the port entrance. An effective post-COVID economic recovery strategy in this country requires the easing of the limitations on fiscal space. Hence, grants like the one that you have pledged to assist St. Lucia will ease the debt burden of our country. I must also commend the nature of the cooperation grants, which demonstrates that our advocacy as seeds is not falling on deaf ears. I must commend the Minister of Agriculture in his trust for promoting uh, food security. It's something that we hear him speak about all the time. And when we speak of food security, most times people think of, you know, what we grow on land. But we must also remember the blue economy, which is something I know that, you know, all governments are focusing on now and with the facilities that we are going to be receiving from the Japanese government you know it will make life a lot more easier for our fishermen to promote you know and, 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 and maybe get bigger catches and stay out longer because they know when they come in now they will not have to go down into the water to pull their boats. Five. Agriculture Minister Honorable Alfred Prosper had the opportunity to see firsthand the shipment of small machinery brought in under the second phase of the Seven Crops project to reduce farmers' reliance on labor while increasing efficiency and optimizing land use, ultimately improving farmers' quality of life. Four. Performance-based financing is a new financing mechanism being introduced by the World Bank. The project will be piloted in St. Lucia. The performance-based financing is a very important mechanism, financing me mechanism that propels, you know, uh, changes in provider behave behavior and also quality of care. Uh, we are very proud uh, to be engaged on that. Uh, this is running under the Health System Strengthening Project, and the PPF is focusing on two diseases, uh, namely uh, hypertension and diabetes mellitus. Three. I want to thank the United Nations office in Barbados in the Eastern Caribbean for convening this meeting, which brings together developmental partners in one room so that we can discuss the opportunities for the government of St. Lucia and have a time to dialogue with multiple development organizations 
with a view to improve the delivery of developmental assistance to St. Lucia. 2. In seeking to reduce unemployment and to promote higher productivity among young people on the island. And this is an area that I've attempted to push as minister as much as I can. And I'm not doing it because Tibet has become a fashionable term in the educational lexicon. I'm doing it because I understand that there is a meaningful and significant role for TVET. One. The Rutsan Tubers Symposium provided a platform that brought together key stakeholders at national and international levels to foster, stimulate and support the improvement of tropical root crop production and utilization.